this bit about exgratia and scrapping it. Are you for it? I mean, I have are, you, are you really, I as have, a party, I, the former president, is he, is he telling us the truth? Look, let me tell you that, funny enough, before this particular conversation began, mm. there was a round table discussion. May my father rest in peace. May he so rest in peace. The Honorable Asedin Ketia was in that meeting. He educated all of us on the work of the National Assembly that led to a drafting of the 1992 Constitution. Mm. He explained the rationale or the raison d'etre for which that clause on Article 71 office holders was put in. The question is simply this, Benjamin, at the time, how many judges did we have? How many members occupied this unique club of Article 71 persons? Mm. It was a very small group. In any case, on all the key economic and financial indicators, Ghana was doing better. Today, we have at least 34 million people in this country. How can you continue to have a small club? Don't forget the work of the Constitutional Amendment Review Committee mm. going around the country. If you observe, the largest referendum came from Article 71. Every Ghanaian wanted something done about that particular clause. Okay, so just to, just to ensure that we encapsulate this uh, very briefly, how are you going to do that? You, you, you will, will need constitutional charity, reforms. Charity begins from home. So first and foremost, once you accept an appointment in my administration, you know that you are not receiving expression. First and foremost. Mm. So take it that we even going, we are going to have 60 government ministers. That's the first rule of thumb. The rest of it will require some parliamentary conversations. It will require engagement with the other sections of and, them. And you will get a pushback from there. Don't worry. Because the other side, whether majority or I minority, can bet you, that when, you, you can't when, coerce them when, into accepting When the framers of the 1992 constitution went for all the members of the assembly, the market women and all of that, what did we say? Ghanaians protested. Members of the then UP tradition protested that they were taking farmers and market women to go and determine what goes into a constitution. It has given us the most stable, stable period in our history as a people. You can't fault the 1992 constitution because it was by the people and for the people. But now the people determine that it is time for us to make amends, that there's too much power vested in the executive, that Article 71 office holders do not own Ghana, that there must be some amendments to that clause as well. There will definitely be some pushback, but I have no doubt that every well-meaning Ghanaian knows that the circumstances of our history have also changed and that there is a need for some amendments we made, and, and they must be far-reaching. An interesting point is that some of you, some, I mean, there are members of parliament who have benefited three, four times. In fact, even Asia, five times. Five times. <laughs> yes, yes, I yes. I mean, they've been there time exactly, and again. Absolutely. These are people who, pardon yes. my language, have grown fat. <laughs> Thank you. So we can ask a question. On, on the largesse yes, to of put the it, state. To put it better. Okay. So now, for these same people sometimes, to come back and say, oh, let's scrap it. Uh, it comes a bit... It I, comes I, across as a bit hypocritical, no, no, but, but all well and good. I, Better I, start from somewhere. No, no, no. I totally. But, but the point. No, 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 I totally. Look, point let me, let me, let me. How long? How long within when if a John Bermani Mahama becomes president again? How long will it take him to institutionalize this? We need. We okay. need to look at this in the framework before you say something, and then seven years on or four years let, on, let, you are now let, trying to let me execute it. Benjamin, let me say something, right? You see, look, for the very first time, I love the fact that all of us, with whatever policies we put out there, we are being put to strict proof. It is a fantastic exercise that at this time, Ghanaians have realized that all these highfalutin promises mean absolutely nothing if there is no clear commitment. So I think that it is important that we establish that we are clearly committed to the work of the Constitutional Amendment Committee we are committed to reviewing the constitution. We are committed to ensuring that parliament will come along, that the judiciary will come along. But what we expect is that the media will help us in the advocacy, will help us in the education, and will actually lead the conversations in the run-up to this particular issue. And secondly, it will start from his own appointments. And you know, look, let me be honest with you. There are some government appointees, you know, ministers, deputies, chief executives, who don't live in public accommodation, you understand? All right. You, you get me? They are given the option, but they decline. He has also mentioned things to do with utilities, for example. Don't forget that there's a lot that is accorded persons within this Article 71 environment. And watch what happened recently when that airline came from my former ministry, for example, the road transport ministry. 
regarding uh, sirens for a certain select group, still members of that same Article 71. Don't you see how embarrassed they were? You see, our democracy and, has and also members of parliament blossomed. from your end, and I, I gave them a flagellation. Thank you. Had and I love the fact that later, the they honorable, were, and it was the so on, disrespectful. The so honorable IT took, Ayine took full responsibility. Don't you see, don't you see the beauty of democracy? People know when the society is shaming them mm. that when times are so tough. Look, when you go to other jurisdictions where they have huge and serious transport congestion, I remember I left the policy document that was handed down by my colleagues in South Africa at the time about traffic management systems, mm -hmm. where you have a system put in place, automated, that determines. And at some point, you hear announcements on public systems telling you, look, this road is congested, use this other side. Or you reduce the number of vehicles on one side and put the traffic on the other. We need to start having elevated conversations. Look, artificial intelligence is being used in the US to manage traffic better. They train systems across the world, are using and employing similar technology. Why do, did you see what happened a few days ago when there was a total blackout? Because technology had done what? Had failed. Mm. We haven't even gotten there. So today when you wake up in the morning, they say, oh, the internet is down. Traffic is the same. It makes no difference. But at least if we employ a better use, instead of using artificial intelligence for just fake news and propaganda and maligning other people, why not? When your people, Ghanaians, accuse you and criticize you for state capture and corruption and all these scandals, you wake up in the morning and tell us that, oh, someone bought an Avensis. I mean, seriously. I think we've gone past <laughs> the Avensis bit. But let's...